World famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WILFO 105.5 FM and Jess, a big dog country radio. Morning, Bob. Good morning. How you doing? I'm good. Doing good? good? Yeah. Counting down to Super Bowl, watching all those shows. Jim Rome's out there by the Bellagio. He's by the fountain, the fountains, yeah, isn't he? That's nice, yeah. Yeah. They're enjoying that. And, of course, uh, Dan Patrick, they always build a big studio for him. And then the rest of them are on Radio Row. Yeah, it's going to be a good Super Bowl. Should be a great game. Ought to be a great game. Two good teams. Uh, lots of star power. Uh, you know, you get Vegas, you can't get any more glitzier than that. And so it's just going to be a fun time out there. And look forward to talking to you a little bit more about that later on. But uh, uh, State Representative Buddy Deloach is supposed to be called in. Hopefully he'll be able to call in in just a moment here. If you hear the phone ring, that'll be him. Um, uh, but... Um, you were talking. Do we want to go ahead and start with them, or or do we want? We can. To, we can. Uh, can, can y'all know I, that that when Buddy with, calls, we'll I check, stop. I checked. With, I checked. With, I checked with Buddy. He said he's calling in. So okay. Well, I Many. There he is, is right there. Okay. He just called in. He so. just called in. So I'm gonna play the weather, and then we'll have uh, we'll have uh, State Representative Buddy Delo show with us. South Georgia weather. Here's your WIFO forecast. Good morning, everyone. Sunshine around for our Wednesday forecast. It's going to be a little windy to the afternoon. We are off to a cold start right now. Highs later today will be in the mid-50s, so you may want a light jacket early on. Tomorrow for Thursday, we'll have some frost in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon. Highs move into the low 60s. Friday, mostly sunny skies and a high close to 70. I'm Georgia meteorologist Laura Huckabee in the GNN Weather Center. And on the phone with us is State Representative Buddy Deloach. Hey, Buddy, appreciate you calling in. Uh, you know, the yeah, session's good about... Good morning, Bob. You know, I always look forward to being in Wayne County, even if it's by radio. Like I said, we haven't been get a chance to talk to you last week, so a lot going on. So just give us your thoughts on the first 16 so days, what's all taking place up there in Atlanta. Well, we're down to the, the big day today is what we call the, the uh, supplemental budget. It's really an amendment to the uh, FY24 budget, and that's House Bill 915. We'll have that on the floor today. It's got a lot of extra money in it for a lot of projects that are going to be good. Some some will be good for South Georgia. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, the revenue estimate's been increased to $37.5 billion. Part of that's uh, increased revenue and uh, two billion is is in uh, surplus funds that the governor is releasing. So there's money to do a lot of important things. I know you got to be happy. Uh, the governor signed an anti-Semitism bill. I remember going back to the eggs and issues breakfast. Uh, you telling that story about your neighbors uh, that were going through a tough time, and you were looking for that legislation to be passed. So tell us a little bit about that and what that meant to you. Well. It, it hopefully puts a little bit of peace in our effort to combat hatred of all sorts and particularly brings a spotlight onto the anti-Semitism. I had no idea a year ago the level of, of, of pure hatred we find in the state of Georgia and, and, and particularly prejudice against the Jewish community. It's just amazing, and we've got to continue to, to do everything we can to combat that. I want to mention one thing that's in this supplemental budget that has to do with elections. There's money in there for watermarks on paper ballots. There's also money in there so that when we do the audit process, it can actually read the text on the ballots without the QR code. That's the first step in getting rid of those QR codes. And that's important to a lot of people, just to just to increase some trust in our election system. You know, just joining us on the phone with us, State Representative Buddy Deloach. Uh, talked to Blake yesterday, said there's a lot going on in Atlanta, a lot of bills being presented. So anything that you're looking forward to or anything you think is going to be controversial? We are beginning to move a, a number of bills. One of those that's been very controversial has to do with the, with the, the 
determining ownership of marshlands, uh, at, we need to clarify that and make sure people understand it's not going to change what you must do. If you have a claim to marshlands, uh, what what you've got to do to, to prove that claim has not changed at all. It just sets forth a, a process. Uh, one of the exciting things that that's happening in our part of the world over at, over in Savannah for Georgia Southern is a is a dental school that's coming about. So there's a lot of interesting things going on. Uh, there's an election bill that, that gives the State Board of Election the authority to to investigate the Secretary of State's office. That's a little controversial, but, but that bill appears to be moving. So, a lot going on. One thing I want to ask you about, most people in this area thought the uh, the mining in Okefenokee issue was dead, but I saw that's uh, coming back. The Alabama-based company is still trying to mine in that area. I know there's a lot of concern in this area about that, and I know you're familiar with that. So, what's, what's going to I, transpire I there? I am very familiar, and I have co-sponsored a bill that, gives the Environmental Protection Division the authority to consider basically the reputation of a company making an application and and look at their past and see if they've had infractions. EPD told us that uh, when when we talked about companies that, that, that come in that, that might have had some infractions in the past, they told us that they didn't really have the authority to consider those with the application. So I've co-sponsored a bill that will allow the EPD to, to look at the past of any company that's applying for a permit to mine in Georgia. Yeah, and uh, I know you always want to hear from your constituents. What's the best way to get a hold of you up there in Atlanta? Say that again, Bob. I said, I know you want to hear from your constituents, and they always get in touch if they have a concern or they want to ask you a question. What's the best way to get a hold of you up there in Atlanta? I think the best way to do that is to call the number that's listed, and I don't have it right in front of me, but it's my it's my state office number, and I got a great admin there named Mrs. Johnson, and she makes a list for me every day if you call and leave a message. If, if, if I'm not there, she'll take your number, and I promise I will call you back. Hey, it's always good to talk to you. I appreciate you calling here Wednesday. Stay safe in Atlanta. Thanks, Bob. Bye. All right, take care. And that's State Representative Buddy Deloach here on the world-famous Butch and Bob Show here on WIFO 105.5 FM and Jessa Big Dog Country Radio. And we continue on with the show. We've got guests in the studio with us this morning. Bob, who are our guests? Well, we got the tourism board in here talking about the Hog Jam, annual Hog Jam coming up. Uh, always a big event. Always fun to watch the weigh-in. Uh, again, you must be in line at 12 noon that Sunday for weigh-in. Are you disqualified, right, Heather? That's correct. That's correct. You can hunt anywhere in the state or anywhere in connected states. you got legal permission to do so. But if you're not in line... For the way in at twelve o'clock, you are SOL. That is correct. <laughs> we've had a. a we got to stress that because yes, people, we've uh, had a few that's pulled up. You know, a couple minutes late. You know, one guy like I said we've had from years past was from Macon, um, and would have won it. Would have won it and won the biggest hog and the prize money. And he, I think, he said throughout that day he had bogged himself down. <laughs> bogged his father-in-law's truck down, bogged his father-in-law's tractor down, and he come in three minutes late. Three minutes. Three minutes and lost it all. But he wanted to weigh his hog anyway, so we go. did weigh right. his hog anyways. And, and you know, right. to know that he would have won it and won the biggest hog. So, yes, you know, don't take those chances. Pull that right. hog out as soon as you can and get him on the way in and get him weighed in that morning. But right um, now you're taking registration, so give us the information, the dates, the time, how people sign up, all that good stuff. Okay, I'm going to introduce our guests. Our, with me today, I have Adam Thomas, my chairman of the Wayne County Board of Tourism, and good old faithful Mr. Deal, who puts in a lot of work and volunteer time to assist us. Um, both these guys are here for different reasons, and so I'm going to let Adam start us off and tell a little bit about what the event hosts and, and how we host this event. Okay, go ahead, Adam. All right. <laughs> Thank you all for having us uh, this morning to start with. Um, so a few of the rules that we have, the uh, the entry fee is $50. That's for a gun, 
gun hunter or a bow hunter. Uh, if uh, you have a child that's 16 or under hunting with an adult, they can hunt for free. The tournament hours are the Friday, February the 16th at 2 p.m. until Sunday, February, February the 18th at noon. You know, Heather mentioned that it is very important that, you know, as, as you get done, that you're in line by, by noon. Uh, prizes, there's a first place prize is $1,000. Uh, second pay, place is 500 and third place is 250. There are bonus categories. So for Friday and Saturday night, the biggest hog weighed in by bow or gun uh, gets $100. Biggest hog killed by a hunter under 16 is $100. Biggest hog killed by a female is 250. And the biggest hog killed on the WMA is 250. So that, you know, this is a, we have several events during the year. This one's a, a big one for us. Um, we also have a group of wounded warriors that we host, you know, and in years past, we've had 12 or 14 guys, and this year we've actually got 22. I think that's right, Heather, you correct me if I'm wrong. That is correct. So we're always looking for, for sponsors and for hosts that are willing to take these guys on, on hunts and, and let them hunt in this tournament uh, with the intent of that we handle everything, all they do is, is come and hunt. So, so uh, it's a good time for us and, and uh, something we enjoy doing. And it takes a lot, as Adam says, to, to pull this off. This year, um, right before the holidays, um, I received the call from Fort Stewart that basically says, we've got our list and we wanted to know if we were, you, you would like for us to go ahead and email it to us. And I said, that would be great. Go ahead and email it to me. And when they sent me the list, I kind of looked at it and I started Got my finger on the screen and started counting. And when I got past 14, it's kind of like my heart just kind of went. Because it's so hard to to take on more. And so immediately I started calling my um, my volunteers and started calling some board members. And I was like, guys, we got 22. You know, we've never hosted no more than 14. 14 was our most last year. And I said, what are we going to do? And they was like, just enjoy the holidays. We'll figure it out. First. So we all got together and we started calling on some people. And, and, you know, I really would like to recognize these guys because these are the guys that basically show up Friday when our Wonder Warriors arrive. These guys are there to, um, to help us give these guys the hospitality that they deserve and um, takes them, sets them up, hosts them, and, you know, brings them back. And, you know, we like to say there's always a competition between, you know, which group of women warriors kills the most hogs or the biggest hogs. We have fun. Um, they show them a good time. Some of them go out the way. They have skeet shoots. They have, um, you know, different events for the guys when they're in different places so just a shout out to them um Shug Blanton he couldn't be here today as y'all know he always um comes through with us with his um group of guys um Wesley Johnson Rat Johnson and Rex, John Rex Johnson were taking some this year um we have Joey Aldridge from Pierce County that has come up and and is volunteered to take a group Sydney and Sean Steverson has um a group that they're allowed to hunt their property Austin Brake um is another one that's taken a couple for us this year and then um our local group um which is Mr. Deal and some of his big volunteers and board members so you know there's a lot that goes into you just don't bring these guys in and, and take them hunting we have to feed up but we have to make sure there's hogs there for them and also these guys and these group of people that volunteer their time not only to feed up weeks prior to the event but set out the set out there to four o'clock in the morning with these guys all night because of course everybody knows they want to hunt at night with their night vision and um, hogs like to feed at night so it's late nights by fires so we greatly appreciate them and we will extend the invitation to anybody because we're we're thinking these guys are going back and telling what a wonderful time they've had and discussing it with some of their their buddies and and more signing up so if you have property and you have a lot of hogs and you're interested and in, you know letting us use your property or hosting some of these guys please give us a call we'd um we'd really like to sit down and talk with you about it because i think once you do it you want to do it forever because the memories that are made and the the um con the connection that you make with these guys are unbelievable so we do appreciate these guys and thanks them a whole lot for that um and mr deal you want to say anything add anything to my you always have stories 
Well, a couple of names that that you didn't mention, Heather, is of course Rainier. They I haven't offer, done my sponsors yet. No, I'm talking about places to hunt. Oh, yes. Rainier offers us a, a place that we take some guys, and we got another one. Billy Martha's <clears throat> feeding up, planning on taking some up to Lindsey Thomas's club, but uh, I'm not sure that he's got the number of hogs he wants, so he'll hunt with us if not. But uh, I will issue a challenge to all these guys that's taking wounded warriors. You better, you better be on your best game because uh, I'm bringing some hogs this year. <laughs> Mike's throwing down the gauntlet here. Yeah, we got, we got some, we got a bunch of hogs out at our place. I know it's going to be great. And <clears throat> if you've never had a chance to talk to these wounded warriors about their hunt, you need to take the opportunity to talk to them a little bit they have a great time uh it's really good it's uh, it's a lot of fun for us to take these guys and talk with them and see how much fun they have and uh it's just a good show these wounded warriors uh that fort stewart set up uh, to ask you about it uh, heather are they still currently in the military? Are they retired, or what's their situation? They're retired. Most of them are, are retired. retired. I yes. didn't know if, how how that worked. If they were still in this area, what the situation? I know was. they're not from here. They're they're from all over. All over. All over. Indiana, okay. Kentucky. So they just come, they come in from everywhere. For everywhere. This event. Yes. Right. Yes. And 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 basically once they're. Um, They've they signed up on the list and everything. They basically, I think, the way from what I understand, they have email addresses and phone numbers that they send out to the group, and then they form a chat. And in that chat, um, of course, we have two, which are um, Steve Orsch is his name, and he is the head leader. He's the one that heads this up for us, and he comes with the guys. So he'll put a chat together and make contact with us, and, and so these guys will get to meet each other, and some of them, like he said, they'll come from places, and they'll pick up this one on the way and, you know, ride together. And so um, it is basically organized out of Fort Stewart, and um, when they when they get here, then that's when we all meet them for the first time and, and assign host for them. Okay. So, but yes. Huh? Yeah, they'll, start, they'll start chatting the day after the hog jam. You can't keep up with that chat. You want to <laughs> do anything after. else? Yeah, there, there's actually a group that have that have come several years in a row, and this is kind of you know listening to them talk. This is what they look forward to every oh, year. year is this hog jam. So they plan their vacation around. Yeah, they, they plan their vacation around. Yeah. And again, I just want to go over the rules real quick before I hit on our sponsors and thank our sponsors that we currently have. We're still accepting sponsors um, up till next next wednesday so um just to go over a few things with adam that adam said that is next weekend february the 16th 17th and 18th um you can hunt both categories if you would like because i had a gentleman call yesterday that said i'm hunting with my son he wants to hunt gun i'm hunting bow is that possible yes it is so if you register a kid under your name and you're a bow hunter you can still register yourself as a bow hunter and the child can hunt with a rifle if you decide i'm gonna hunt with bow you know the first two days and then that last day that sunday morning um, or sunday evening morning excuse me i'm going to hunt with a gun then you can register for both categories so it's just not limited to one category per hunter you can hunt both categories um again like bob said make sure you're in by 12 noon um let's see there was something else i wanted to cover on the rules uh, there's five hogs you're allowed to kill five hogs but we're going to only take the heaviest weight of the three for your total weight so um out of the weekend you know you've got plenty of time to um kill that big one don't worry if you just killed one we're going to take five of them and take the heaviest weight of three please don't bring me no stinking hogs if they have been sitting in your field since friday <laughs> and you didn't bring it friday night to weigh in um for that bonus category please put him in a cooler don't leave him out there and bring him to me on sunday because i will disqualify you i cannot ha there's some things i can tolerate and some things i can't we can't do that um and weigh-in will close every night um at 10 o'clock on friday and saturday night so um if you do enter those bonus categories make sure you're um into jc fairgrounds by 10 or 10 o'clock on friday and saturday night to weigh your hog and what time on sunday sunday 12, 12 
noon. 12 noon. Now, you know, we for years, I don't even, I reckon the first 15 years we did this, we've always done two. Well, everybody says, you know, it's hard to keep, you know, fish alive till two. It's hard to keep these hogs from spoiling because, you know, South Georgia weather. Sometimes we might be baking. Sometimes we might be freezing. We don't never know. Um, so we've changed it to 12 noon. And that, you know, a lot of people that's been fishing with us and hunting with us for a long time says, when did y'all change it to 12? I'm telling you, we've changed it to 12. It's not right. two no more. It's 12. It's been that way for probably the past four years now. So, but yeah. 12 noon. If you get there in the gates closed you're too late yes you're okay. too late all right um i'd like to thank, thank our sponsors like i said um we sent sent letters out um been making connections with a lot of people right now at the present time we want to thank prime south bank mobile concrete r and r hog and bones eam hendrix holland events uh, rainier advanced material the city of odom jessup and scriven way memorial hospital and of course you know our guys that you know do so much for us forest lodge they're so kind they always open up their place for our guys and when the warriors to stay rosier transportation he's been hauling things for us um to feed up with we greatly appreciate him smoke show that cooks for us purvis well and pump sheffield's trophies and sports crossroads maintenance and repair um, Georgia Department of Natural Resources that partner up with us for our wildlife management areas and things like that. We could not do this event without these sponsors, and we thank y'all. And like I said, if you're interested in a sponsor, you can call my office at 427-3233. We'll be glad to email you a sponsorship letter or talk to you a little bit more about this event. Um, if you need registration, you can register online. Um, we'll take registration up till fi Friday, 6 o'clock. That is going to be at um, waynetourism.com and click on the hog jam and then active. You can waynetourism.com mm -hmm. and, you, and you, you can also um, come by the office again to register or you can pick up packets that I'll be distributing today to Wayne Feed and Seed, um, Crossroads, Harris Ace Hardware, and of course we'll have some on the board at Rainier. So if you need any of that, you can check with me. Again, I want to thank all the guys that are here today, all the guys that's putting in work, feeding up, um, Jody and Mickey Thomaston, Mike, um, my board of tourism that always are willing to show up and show out when it comes to a tourism event. We cannot do this without all our, our help. Okay. Hog Jam coming up. Not this weekend, but the yes. following weekend. Yes. Anything else? That's it. That's it? Yes. Nothing else? Anything else for him, Bob? I yeah, appreciate you coming in. I will say this, though. Heads up, guys. Um, the fair will be coming in early this year. We've worked with the fair company to um, to confirm our dates for the spring fair. March 28th, we'll open gates on the fair, run it through April 6th. Um, that will be coming up. Then um, that Saturday prior to that, I think, is the Dogwood Festival. Um, we go into April. Um, we'll again the fair, May, June. We've got Paddle Georgia coming in this year. It's like every four years, like Bragg. Um, talking about 300, 350 kayakers that will be paddling the whole length of the Altamaha River, staying in our community for three days. I'll be getting information out to the community to host Paddle Georgia specials and show off some hospitality to these guys. And um, of course, the catfish tournament the first weekend in June. I'm not going to get too much ahead of myself because that's June. I mean, already before we know it. It'll be here so, before you know it. I know. So we're going to stop right there. <laughs> okay. Well, sounds good. Lots going on with the tourism board and keeping people coming here to Wayne County. And that's a good thing. Yes. We're excited. All right. Thank you so much for having, us. for having us. All right. Enjoyed having you all on anytime. All right. We'll be back with more of the world famous Butch and Bob show in a moment. So stay tuned. When further treatment is no longer an option, hospice can provide services to manage symptoms and difficulties caused by illness. Emotional, psychosocial, and spiritual care, as well as support to the families and caregivers, are all part of hospice care. Hospice of South Georgia has been a part of the health community in Wayne and surrounding counties since 1998. The professional yet compassionate attention provided by our staff is unsurpassed. Widely supported by donations from the local population, Hospice of South Georgia is the local nonprofit hospice 
Hospice in Wayne County. Our administrative office is located at 1625 Sunset Boulevard, and Hospice of South Georgia accepts anyone who meets hospice criteria, regardless of their ability to pay. Please call 912-588-0080 to speak with someone about hospice care. That was 912-588-0080. We are your hometown hospice, and we are here to serve you. Hospice of South Georgia, working to add life to your days. 824, 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO. We continue on with the world-famous Butch and Bob show. Bob, uh, you ask Mike to stay? Yeah, I thought it would be appropriate Mike Deal stay. You know, as people know, today at 11 o'clock, they're going to celebrate the life of a uh, longtime city commissioner, Gerald DeWitt, and passed away on Sunday at the age of 76. And no better person to talk about Gerald DeWitt than Mike Deal. And I was fortunate to know Gerald all through those 21 years of being a commissioner just great guy uh, as you mentioned last night the city meeting though he did a lot to save the city a lot of money uh, this guy was very knowledgeable about a lot of areas uh, brought a lot to the table uh, just you know as they mentioned last night he was never one to look for publicity never one to look for a pat on the back but he, he just always was there and uh, just a great servant you know to the city of Jessup and he'll be truly missed but no one knew him better than you did so I just thought it'd be good to talk a little bit about him yeah, first uh, first thing I mentioned, I get to talk a little now that Heather's gone. She she's so shy, <laughs> uh, and you know you have to keep prompting her. But anyway, I get to talk some. Now talking about Gerald, it, you know it's a sad day for this community. I was shocked, and I was even shocked more when I found out he's only a couple years older than me. I always looked up to Gerald as one of the older guys. But he was uh, he was so smart and such a great guy that you didn't I didn't know, I never thought of him being my age or, or a younger guy when we would we we were in our conversations. But he he uh, he really didn't care about the publicity and about I or big me uh, and he always was working to make this community better uh he was you know just to mention a few things he was the father of the greenway project uh tons of work gerald that was gerald's idea and uh he did all the work to make make sure it happened and another project that i mentioned last night uh that nobody really knows about is a project with a local industry where, whereby the city takes their uh, post-secondary sludge from the wastewater treatment plant out to mix in with the the uh, waste of that company. And, and it's Ray. I'll, I'll tell you who it is because they're great partners. It's Ray in here. And uh, it's just a small amount that me, we mix in with, with those guys and it saves us a ton of money. I would I would say most communities we're pretty lucky uh, in Wayne County to be able to do that. We're really lucky. Most small communities will pay two hundred thousand dollars a year to get rid of that that uh, byproduct from the wastewater treatment plant. You have to haul it to the landfill, and as you know, uh, you have to pay so much a ton to put anything in that landfill. And uh, we just take it out there. And this has been going on probably 30 years. And uh, Gerald was the father of that project. And it it saves us $200,000 a year at the minimum. And uh, that's millions of dollars, you know, uh, since that time. And he was just a, he was a great forward thinker. He was, that mind worked (laughs) Uh, all the time about how we can make this community better. It, it, he didn't take anything away from us. He's, he was always giving and and uh, a great <clears throat> mentor to me. Uh, very easy to work with if you had something on your mind that you wanted to do for the community. You could talk with Gerald, and he was all in from, from the get-go. So. Yeah, he's always level-headed, you know, never got really – you know, boisterous about anything. He I mean, he was always the steady 
guy every time. Every time you met Gerald, the same way. I mean, he just was there to handle the business and look out for the betterment of the city of Jessup. Well, he was in the environmental field out at Rainier and uh, did a great job for them. And, you know, a lot of our stuff in wastewater treatment and in, in water supply dealt with the same thing that Gerald dealt with out at the mill. <clears throat> and he knew a lot of folks. He, he knew people in Atlanta. He worked with those people in Atlanta. And it was always a plus when Jessup had an issue, a Gerald call. And, uh, and, and he would. Anytime he got a chance to, to help the city, he was always on point. Great guy. And now, his, ne- and, and now his nephew's serving as a city yeah. church, and he's going to speak today at the <clears throat> Celebration Life. That takes place today again at 11 a.m. at Reinhardt Sons Chapel. But just want to pass along our thoughts and prayers to his wife, Linda, 56 years, his daughter, Melissa, and also his granddaughter, Rain. So, again, um, again, that celebration taking place this morning at 11 a.m. But, again, it was mentioned last night at the city meeting, but I just thought it would be good for you to talk. Like I said, no one knew him better than you did. Like I said, yeah, I liked what you said. He said he always had your back. Sometimes, yeah, he always sometimes, had sometimes, sometimes when he didn't need to have your back. <laughs> yeah, looking back on all of my years, my 50 years, yeah, I made a few mistakes. I know that. But Gerald, Gerald was the kind of guy that he had my back from day one to the last day. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he said a few things to Jonathan McCullough when Jonathan decided to run. And Jonathan's doing a great job, and he's going to do a great job. He's he's an intelligent guy too, and I think he's going to uh, fall right into Gerald Shatter. Gerald's father-in-law, James Driggers, was was a commissioner before Gerald, and I think inspired Gerald to get into the, to the business. And he was a, he was a good guy. He was uh, on the city council when I came to work with the city of Jessup. So you got a history there. You got uh, James Driggers, and then you got Gerald, and then you got uh, Jonathan that's coming in. So uh, it's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Again, just uh, thoughts and prayers to the family. Again, that celebration of life taking place today at 11 a.m. at Reinhardt Sons Funeral Home Chapel. Uh, and Gerald DeWitt passing away Sunday at the age of 76. So appreciate you sticking around and talking about your friend and mentor and again like i said the city lost a great man uh, no kidding way too young uh, yeah yeah when you know you're eight. 74 me yeah i come in 72 72 okay yeah. I'm 72 and i'm 69 and we get these old bits all the time oh, I am around that, and yeah, i just I'm and i just it, it just it makes you think it yeah, really does and you know when you're you getting that and you got folks around that age i just found out yesterday that uh, Ollie of uh, yeah, his hands and Ollie's barbecue yeah. sauce. He died yesterday. Yeah, he went past for a simple long day. And, just, that's uh, another great man. I mean, you yeah. saw him everywhere. His, Love his that barbecue, barbecue sauce, sauce was right. in the, the supermarkets. You saw him at the different events around, like Odom Day and stuff right. like that. Hands and Ollie's barbecue sauce, and and that was a passing right there of another well-known Wayne County. That's another uh, friend. Yeah. Wow. I told somebody, I said, I need to check those bits more, and I, I, I really don't do it. I, 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 didn't I see, I read them first. all the time each day yeah, when they come I in. Just, yeah, I need to do a better job of that because I didn't realize Gerald had passed until somebody mentioned it yesterday. So, so. But, again, just wanted to get, pass along our thoughts. And I don't think they have families. the old bit ready yet for, no, for Ollie. I, I talked to Ron Hart. They're meeting this afternoon right. with the family, so it'll be posted this afternoon. Okay. Well, Mike, thanks for coming in. Thank you. And, uh, Bob, that's it for the show. Yep. All right, the world-famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup has been brought to you by First Southern Bank, Vans Barbecue, Murphy Butter Supply, and O'Quinn & Associates.